Well, joining us now is Jonathan Arkush, former president of the Board of Deputies of British Jews. Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on. I mean, this is going to be, I'd imagine, uh, as we start to take that live footage at two o'clock, an incredibly emotional time for Jewish people all over the world. The British Jewish community, along with Jewish communities all over the world, uh, is holding its breath. Uh, I was at a local vigil near to my house this morning and uh, we lit some candles for a birthday of a child hostage who was celebrating, not quite the right word, their fourth birthday. Uh, I think that um, there was barely a dry eye in the house. This is a very tense and worrying moment and we're all focused on the well-being of the children, the young children and the women who are due for release, please God. Uh, I think there are babies down there, which is just a horrific uh, thing to contemplate. Um, now, uh, there are 240 hostages, uh, Jonathan. Uh, we're, you know, pr please, God, praise God, we get 50 of them uh, uh, released today or, or over the next four days, rather, I should say. Uh, let's hope this process works out. But that will still leave 190 uh, innocent Israelis trapped down in those awful tunnels beneath Gaza. Uh, you, you, you know, and Hamas aren't going to give them up, are they? They are their bargaining chip. So while we celebrate the release of some hostages, uh, the majority of them will still be down there. So there's a lot of work for Israel still to do. That's the enemy uh, that Israel has the unenviable task of dealing with. And the Israelis are well aware of the tension between carrying on the war against this evil of Hamas and the risk that it poses to hostages. But Hamas is so cruel, it's not just going to give up hostages because, as they, you say, they're bargaining chips. And it's shown in the past it's capable of holding on to hostages for years and years and years just waiting for the time when, in its conception, it can bargain. I mean, something heartbreaking I read just before the programme is that the IDF soldiers who are going to be escorting some of the children being released to safety uh, have been told to answer the question if asked, where's my mummy and daddy? I'm here to take you somewhere safe and they will tell you what, uh, answer your questions when you get there. Reminding us all that some of these children who might be coming out will be coming out to find their families have all been killed and their homes completely destroyed. What sort of efforts are taking place within the Jewish communities around around the world to provide support to the people in Israel who, especially the little children, who might find they're coming back orphans? One of the things which uh, we're doing uh, in Britain is constantly to reach out to family and friends in Israel, we all have them, and to say, how are you doing? We're thinking of you. Uh, I know so many people here in the UK who have family and friends who are either serving at the moment on the front line uh, or they uh, know people or are related to hostages and their families. So this hits home for all of us and we stand ready to help in whatever way we can. Fortunately, Israel is a modern, highly developed country and I've seen the instructions to the soldiers, and they're so careful, prepared by child psychologists, on how we're going to deal with these children who may already, probably, sadly, will be damaged by seven weeks uh, underground in Gaza under the cruel captivity of Hamas. We don't know how they've been treated. Even if they've been treated decently, those children are going to find out what's happened to their families, sometimes they've been orphaned, uh, and their homes and their communities in southern Israel. It's absolutely heartbreaking. It seriously is. Uh, now, obviously, uh, Jonathan, our attention at the moment is focused uh, on the Middle East, on uh, Gaza and the Rafa crossing, uh, in the hope that uh, these exchanges uh, go smoothly. Uh, but back here, you referred to you and your 
uh, friends in the Jewish community here. Uh, how traumatic has this been for you? And I'm talking about events here. I've attended, I've been to look at three of these marches, these massive marches uh, through snaking through the streets of central London. Uh, and the anti-Semitism, the level of anti-Semitism in these marches is frankly disgusting. And I've been uh, stunned by watching the police failing to act about this. Uh, this must have been a terrible time for the British Jewish community. Uh, me too, uh, Alex and uh, Kev, and we've, I've been on your programme before to discuss this. British Jews have been absolutely shocked at the level of anti-Jewish racism that we're seeing in our streets. And one of the features of these demonstrations is that none of them, so far as I've been able to tell, and you've been there, have called for peace. None of them have called for the return of the hostages. Mm -hmm. And many of them have been violent, mm -hmm. violent against our police and violent against even such sacred places as our war memorials. Climbing up a memorial to wave a Palestinian flag and daub it with free Palestine What's that got to do with human rights? What's that got to do with the humanity of looking at the people who are dead and injured and damaged on both sides? Mm. By contrast, there have been two or three, and there's another on Sunday, vigil and march in support of Israel. Every single one has expressed care and sorrow at the death of innocent people on both sides. Every single one has waved Union Jack flags as well as Israeli flags. Not one has seen an iota of violence against a policeman or against anyone from an opposing demonstration. But there have been people around those Jewish demonstrations. I've witnessed it and experienced it myself and people walking home to the tube station are routinely abused and called things like baby killers. I hope that your viewers and listeners, when they see these huge marches, will see into their true nature, their ugliness, and ask, what cause are they actually supposed to be representing? It's a very good point, yeah. Jonathan, because uh, the, the, you see all these banners, you know, from the, from the river to the sea and free, free Palestine. Uh, these marches are massive. The last one, 300,000 people on it. What you don't see, uh, I've seen the, a very rare few po banners saying, uh, um, calling for a ceasefire. I've not seen a single banner at any of the marches I've attended saying release free the hostages. Uh, I think it's an extraordinary phenomenon going on in our midst mm -hmm. right now. And our hearts go out to you uh, and the British Jewish community and, of course, uh, Israel uh, for that appalling event on October the 7th. And thank you so much for thank being you. with us.